Few weapons strike as much fear as the Gatling gun. Being one of the most powerful guns ever created, it not only changed war, but the world. Created in 1861 by Dr. Richard Gatling, a rich Virginian farmer who by this time had already invented and patented several inventions. Although from the South during the Civil War, Gatling was a supporter of Northern slave ideas. Not only did Gatling want to see the South lose, but he wanted to help the North. Gatling being who he was, a peaceful man who had once gone to medical school to become a physician, did not approve of any war. His belief was that the invention would become so devastating, it would make men fear war. Gatling completed his gun during the Civil War and sold 11 of his 12 guns to Major General Benjamin Butler. General Butler used Gatling's guns in the Battle of Petersburg, which he won. After this, the Gatling gun became famous in the eyes of the military. Teddy Roosevelt also used the Gatling gun at the Battle of San Juan Hill in the Spanish-American War. At this battle, Roosevelt made the famous cry, It's the Gatling's men, our Gatling's. Although one of the most powerful guns during the Civil War, Gatling's gun was declared obsolete by the U.S. military during World War I because of the Maxim machine gun. Although in storage until World War II, the Gatling gun benefited from its hibernation. While on the shelves, gunsmiths and gun experts reapproached the Gatling gun and recreated the gun again from the inside out. New integrated barrels and a jamming removal system were added to the gun to make it more devastating and more powerful in the heat of battle. These problems that caused the demise of the Gatling gun were reapproached to make a more powerful Gatling gun. During World War I, Nazi technology was far ahead of the rest of the world. During this time, the Browning gun was the main aircraft gun on most Allied planes. From a distance, it was not powerful enough to take out Nazi aircraft. The Allied forces then gave Colt Manufacturing the go-ahead to begin producing Gatling guns. Later, General Electric received the contract in a special project from the military called Project Vulcan. The contract to General Electric required them to fire the 60 caliber round, have a maximum length of 80 inches, and have a minimum of 1,000 round per minute. The company then created the T-45, a 2,500 to 6,000 round per minute Gatling gun. The Army and Navy were very impressed and requested more T-45s. General Electric quickly complied and gave the military 34 new T-45s. After this, General Electric was free to experiment with prototypes. They created four prototypes, all similar in design, but each with its own unique characteristics. The T-150 used experimental 27mm rounds instead of the standard 60 caliber. The T-171 used 20mm rounds, and the T-62 was the same as the T-45, except with a shortened barrel. After the Korean War, the contract to General Electric changed, requiring them to have a fire rate of 6,000 rounds per minute and use the 20mm round. This was the start of the 20mm project. This became the project that created the basis for the Gatling gun today. The A-10 Warthog became the first plane to ever be created around a gun. It was created around the Gatling gun and is still in use today and created the basis for the minigun which is mounted on helicopters and other flying aircraft. Although only used briefly during the Civil War, this weapon drastically changed American history. It has had a home in the hands of American soldiers since the 1800s on land and sea and continues to be used by American soldiers today. The Gatling gun could also have won Custer's last stand. If General Custer had decided to bring the Gatling guns, his troops carried to the battle. Custer felt they would slow the movement of the troops, when in reality, it could have won the battle. Gatling, however, sold his gun to other countries, such as Japan and France. The British also used the Gatling gun extensively throughout Africa. One Gatling gun is even on display in the Beijing National Museum.
Gatling spent the later years of his life working to spread his invention across the world in order to maintain peace. However, Gatling's guns are more than military super guns. They are the protectors of nuclear power plants and other very important buildings. The gun itself is a way that Dr. Gatling was able to show his genius and hatred of war, created for only the sole purpose of saving the lives of soldiers and civilians alike. Dr. Gatling's dream may someday be realized and can bring an end to war everywhere. This was the main reason that Dr. Gatling created the Gatling gun in the first place. He wanted to create an innovation that would significantly reduce the amount of deaths brought to his hometown. He not only wanted to do this, but he also hoped to one day end war in general. He hoped that his invention becomes so devastating and destructive that men would actually fear having wars. He hoped that one day there would be world peace because of his weapon. Hopefully someday Dr. Gatling's dream can be realized and the world can change for the better and not have war. Perhaps Dr. Gatling's gun can be a part of this incredible achievement. Cool. 